Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan with my co-host, Bud Vino. Uh, Danica, as you said, Bud Vino with the host of Custody Matters Live, Danica Joan. It is Wednesday, February 5th. We're recording on the day we're airing, Danica. That's great. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're very excited. Everybody can see Danica is glowing, and so is our guest. I'm going to let Danica introduce our awesome guest. But look at Danica glowing. She's <laughs> come back from Key West, Florida, ladies and gentlemen. And she is radiating. Not that you don't usually, but as I said off the air, it's, it's great to have you back, my friend. I feel whole again, Danica. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for missing me. I, um, it was a really great time. It's hard for me to be away too many days without me feeling a little bit like a little wonky. So I'm actually glad I'm back, especially with what we have that we're creating over the next few months. So, and that brings us to our special guest today, which is Dawn McCarty. She is, um, oh, I forgot, Dawn, you're gonna explain to me what your title is. It has to do with the National Parents Organization. Welcome, Dawn. <laughs> the chair for Florida, uh, now, I got, now I'm stumbling. National Parents Organization of Florida, and I'm the chairperson for it. <laughs> See, let me, let me, first of all, thank you, Dawn, so much. Th this is an exciting one, because Dawn, we work together, all of us, behind the scenes on the conference. These little, quote, unquote, snafus, you know, these little you know, stutterings and things are what make the show awesome and organic. So yep. again, you guys are awesome, <laughs> and, and, and Dawn, we're so happy to have you on. You do so much work, um, you know, behind the scenes, and now, in front of the, you know, right here, uh, we thank you for all the effort you put in. And as, as uh, Danica said to you, work uh, oh, thank tirelessly you. for your organization. What is it exactly that drew you and Danica together? I know you have a story behind the scenes with that. Oh, for, for Danica and I. So I've, I've been going around the state and putting on screenings for erasing families. And we've kind of started what we're calling an impact campaign to bring awareness and to um, help get the information out there about people that may not even know that they've been erased or that they have been um, separated from a loving a loving family member. So Danica and I were at a screening together and it's like, hey, I know you. And it was so fast. And before I knew it, you know, the night was over. So a couple of you know months went by and I thought, oh, we got to get together. We're so close. There's no reason why her and I can't do something in the state. And I wanted to have a conference, a shared parenting conference or something along that line. So I thought, I'm going to call Danica. So I was blue. I said, hey, I, I need to talk to you. <laughs> and it was funny because we both, have, we both have the same ideas. So it was really good to be able to come together and consolidate our resources and you know, brainstorm and figure out how to put this amazing event together. Oh, and it truly is an amazing event. And it's just been... Um, Everything has just been, been coming together with so much synergy and just divine right order around this because it's not, um, our conference that's happening at the end of, end of May, April 24th and 25th, is called the Guardians and Gatekeepers Conference for professionals who's, who are dealing with clients who are um, dealing with custody situations. So what makes this one really unique is not only did like all of the amazing speakers come out of the woodwork so quickly, but all of us are in collaboration to create and make this thing happen. So Dawn, we get to see you every Monday for our planning meeting and, and, uh, and everything. So it's like, it's a personal to us. Don't you agree? I agree. Yeah. It's, it's definitely feels like something that we're putting together that is really meaningful for both of our causes because we have different things, but we're all, be, we're all able to come together and, and really highlight on all of it. So it really works good to collaborate and you know, include everything that we can that promotes family and advocacy. Danica, Don, incredible. Danica, speaking of collaboration, I forgot to mention our affiliation with the Dad Talk Today Network. And so that's, uh, again, that my apologies that, again, this is our second show, I believe, with the network. So it may take me a little bit. I'm slow, but I catch up. So shout out to Eric Carroll, uh, Chris Gannon over there, Dad Talk Today, and all the, all the shows over there. The network is uh, pushing 70,000 people now, Danica. That's so amazing. Of that. 
And also give a shout out to Eric Carroll and the network for uh, putting together that uh, awesome cartoon. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Custom Matters oh, Live. Awesome. Uh, awesome. With, uh, and I will be on his show on February 15th at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. Look, yes. listen, look, see? It, organic. It just happens I know. So, <laughs> yeah, Eric's great over there. He's, candidly, he surprised Danica and I yesterday morning. Oh, uh, yeah? And put a smile on our faces. So, again, speaking of collaboration, uh, Don, uh, Danica, you mentioned too, and you did too, Don, that energy and that support uh, behind the scenes and everybody. It, it, I feel like a kid on Christmas morning every time I go in there because everybody is so excited. Um, so it's, it's great to have you as part of that uh, and very, very natural. And I can't wait. Again, you're going to be one of those people that gets that hug down in Florida because Dr. Mark Roseman is going to be there, everybody, and a, and a plethora of other people. And Dr. Mark, I'm going to give him a very genuine hug. He can't wait neither. Can he I. loves hugs. He, yep. he does. So, so Dawn is our first spotlighted guest um, and speaker at the conference that we're, that we're bringing here on Custody Matters Live, because over the next few weeks, what we'd like to do is to just showcase each speaker that's going to be at the conference to get, to kind of get your juices going so that you are, um, so that we actually see you and get to meet all of these people in person. You'll be able to meet uh, Eric Carroll, uh, who's the Dad Talk Today Network founder. You'll be able to uh, meet Bud and myself and Dawn and so many other amazing Live and in person. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. as we said, when we had the show with a, a, a variety of different guests, Danny, we be able to pinch them. Dawn will be right <laughs> there, but not hard, just enough that we know that now she's real. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. So, so Dawn, can you share with us a little bit about what you um, what you're going to be speaking about at the conference? Sure. Uh, with National Parents Organization, our goal is 50/50 uh, equal shared parenting. Um, the the default for that in in improving our state statutes. So NPO has done a study on each of the states and evaluated all of their state statutes and gave them a grade as far as what their um, shared parenting laws actually covered. Now this is on the statute level, not the court systems. We're not, they didn't go in and judge, you know, how the actual court so system is um, conducting their custody issues and, and cases. So based on statutes, there is a grade that each state has received and Florida has received a C plus, um, which is up from a C from the last study that they had done. So we got, we went up just a little bit, but we really want to do much better than that. Um, there's only two states in the in the country that received an A, and that is Kentucky, is the first one actually, and then Arizona got an A minus. So they're really close, um, closely following Kentucky. Um, there's a bunch of states that are really working hard right now that are really close to getting some kind of laws passed. And of course, you know, with laws, it's a constant improvement. We have to constantly keep at it. So Florida actually has a, a law on the floor, not a law, a bill on the floor right now in the House and the Senate, and they're going through the subcommittees. And it's part of the dissolution of marriage law. So we have some um, excerpts and some blurbs in this law that is trying to make that default shared parenting um, automatic right off the bat. So when you, you know, when people are going through divorce, it is the presumption that they will have 50-50. So um, shared parenting. So we are really trying to work with our legislators and with the people in Florida. So that's one thing that erasing families really comes in handy because it gets me out there in front of people and we can start to um, get some motivation and and movement behind it and get people calling the representatives because that's how we get laws passed is by the voters. So that's kind of what our impact campaign really is focused on. So the more we show the film, which I want to take to every city in, in Florida. So this is kind of like going to be our big official premiere, I'm hoping. So um, the bigger we make this conference, the better we make this conference, the more kickoff we get and the more momentum I think we will get from it. Awesome. You know, something I want to be clear about, because I actually, not too long ago, I, I had a conversation with a retired judge, and he very much loved his role as a family court judge, and his, his uh, uh, 
what he stood for is, you know, what was the best interest of the child. So he was actually against 50-50 in the state of Florida and was very instrumental in shooting it down that first time. Uh, and what I, I was just wanting to listen to what it was on his side of the fence, what had him think that, that um, think the way he thought. And I still am quite not not quite sure because it's my understanding that when leg the legislature says, okay, we're going to be a 50-50 shared parenting state, it doesn't mean that a judge does has lost their power to say, you know what, that child would not be uh, would not thrive if they were 50-50 with. Well, so you're you know, talking about discretion, the judge having some discretion. Yeah. There's another misunder not misunderstanding, but I think a lot of the confusion is that when we're talking about shared parenting statutes, we're talking about both parents having equal standing in the child's mind. So to the child, mom and dad are equal parents. So it's not about, I mean, it is, but it's not, the, the initial concept is First, we gotta establish that both parents have rights to access to their children, right? And then time. Time is a different aspect of this. So yes, we want parents to have as equal, as much equal time as possible, as close to 50-50 as we can get it. So that you know comes in with um, family dynamics and being able to actually adjust that. So, when the when people first hear about this, and a lot of the people start talking about, we, you can't have 50-50, it's never gonna work. A lot of it is because they think it's the time, but it's actually yeah. the status. I am right. a, I'm an equal parent to the other parent. Awesome, John. Thanks for pointing that out. That's very important. That, that's something that John is very correct about. Some people have a different view of what that means in their head. So, as we know, sometimes exact 50-50 uh, time sharing isn't always possible for the child and that's where again it gets yeah. confused it's 50 50 legal custody joint custody meaning the same rights both parents right being able to even temporarily child. yeah in both situations right sure being able to go to the child's school being able to uh, check on them going to the doctor's appointments uh, showing that support and love that's what it's all about for that child so Making again, decisions hats together, yep. Well, hats, hats off to you, and also to Ginger Gentile. I know, obviously, I, I believe she was mentioned with a racing family and uh, the work that she's doing yeah. uh, is amazing. And also, speaking of legislation, Mr. Mark Ludwig uh, with American People Share Parenting, who is a wonderfully awesome man, and he works tirelessly uh, to change legislation. And again, hats off to Kentucky. I know they were uh, a little while back uh, it was a huge deal, as it should be. And um, Missouri. Totally. Missouri's right in there right now, too. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of work being done on so many different levels, and that's what I think is really great, that there's, it's not going to be um, one avenue, one path. There's so many different things that we are elevating this issue, and each group elevates it a little bit more. And, yeah, so it's great that everybody is starting to, I think, get some traction. Well, yeah, you know. Great, great way to put it. Yeah. Well, it's just going to say, you know, it, it, I've always been a stand for 50-50 um, in that both parents have equal rights. That's so important because if you feel like back in the day, several decades ago, where it was presumed that mom was the best fit parent to raise the children, while dad could be marginalized and, and just, you know, be the breadwinner. Um, it was just, it, it put people, anytime people think they've got one up or more leverage in an emotionally charged situation, mm -hmm. that just, that can't go good. For Power the, over the other, right? Yeah. Right, and, and, and again, we talked about that bottom line is a child. It, it's the child, and I know people, uh, it, we've talked about this too, it's innate to love, and, and children need that love from both parents. It's not always yes, fun. To love and be loved, and right, what's important exactly. too is, in, in Kentucky, since the law passed there, since their law has been improved to the, to the A, there, there is some reports that show or statistics that show that there's been 11% reduction in domestic violence. And they oh, are okay. attributing that to the fact that we've removed some of the conflict from the courtroom. So oh. removing that conflict and not, uh, not having that power struggle or that battle where you know, you're trying to dissolve a marriage 
but it eventually or essentially is dissolving the fiber of the family unit and you might not live together or mom and dad might not live together or parents may not live together but the kids still have two parents so right. you know if we well, can remove that conflict it, it helps yeah and I, I would love to see the statistics in reference to teen suicide um and in kentucky compared you know compared with the rest of the united states um, I would love so, to see a lot of studies like yeah, that. Yeah, I would too. And because again, we know that how it correlates when you when we talk about even uh, mass shootings, the the percentage mm -hmm. that didn't have uh, and the fatherless. Uh, yeah, exactly, fatherless. Um, so again, kids need that nurturing from both sides. I see my wife nuzzling, kissing my nine year old all the time, and I do the same. He needs that from both of us. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. We learn different things from each parent, so right. I think it's Im very important. And you know, I've I've been on a couple of studies. Uh, one of the my first study that I participated in was the um, uh, what's it called, the parental abduction and the long term effects. So this was a study based off of children that you know they're going through high conflict, separation, divorces, but it also involves being abducted by one of your parents. And people usually say. Uh, well, it was one of your parents, so it really doesn't count. But it does because you were, you were the, the child is still ripped out of one world and put into another. And there is, there's the long term effects include identity crisis and, and emotional trauma that just never is resolved. So it goes on and on and on. And that's how we learn to deal with conflict by not dealing with conflict. So this study was done in London. Well, it was done here, but for London, the Uni Metropolitan University. I have yet to see an actual study done in the United States. So I'm hoping that we can find a way to, you know, I don't know what the best way or what the best demographic is to, to do that, but having studies basing on certain aspects like the long-term effects, but then also the suicide. And we already know that the parents, you know, the moms and dads, as far as suicide goes, that's already terrible. And now we're adding the child to that statistic. Right. We need right. to it. I ahead. love it that your organ that uh, National Parents Organization is really bringing up the statistics because you know we can be these voices in the wilderness. We could be this grassroots organization the, to try to make change, but truly the change comes in the legislative ends in the fact and these studies that National Parents Organization is cre are creating these uh, these you know report cards for each state. That really something that I that I didn't always see. I mean, I've been following. I've been in the movement for about twenty years, and uh, you know, it was difficult to find anything. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, this Danica is really cool. I, I I saw something now. They did the study how many years ago, Don? The the original wasn't just a few years ago. I think it was. Oh man, if I'm wrong, I'm gonna get in trouble. Well, see, 2014. <laughs> right. Well, I remember seeing it not long after. Uh, yeah. And, it was impressive and then last year. Kind of, yeah, to kind of get that gauge. Um, yeah. And so to see again now, it's great to have that comparative when it's coming out yeah. again. See, see who we need to. Uh, and you can see those improvements and right. the lack of improvement. And there's we have so, a lot of states that have no improvement. So those right. really need the the focus. But I think that NPO. Um, the more we grow, the more we become aware, and you know, we're a grassroots organization in each of the states, right? So the more people that we can get involved in and do some of these studies, and I don't know what the national, um, what their plans are as far as what studies they want to tackle first, but um, I, I definitely think it would help us to have these different um, stud or statistics that we can use to show our lawmakers, hey, you know, this is how many people that this has happened to. And when you start talking volumes, it's harder and harder to ignore it. We have 25 million people now that are erased or missing their family members. 25 million. That number has gone up. Unacceptable. It is. Unacceptable. That the only word that comes to my mind, unacceptable. So, John, awesome stuff. Danica. Well, what I was going to say is one of our speakers, and I'm, and I'm, I don't know that I really want to be at liberty to, to say who one of our speakers are, but they are right, I think, right now or have recently been in a court hit case defending a parent's right to um, be in the child's life, because, but, the, but 
the parent is defending themselves against the state because one parent already lost their rights to the child. So the child is in foster care and this other parent is not an American citizen. So now this person who's not an American citizen is trying to fight and say, listen, this child has one parent who is capable and not been, is not been abusive or neglectful. It's just, but, and, and I can't believe that, um, that we're even having this, this discussion of yes, me saying, too. yeah, yes, all I'm because the, the parent is not an American citizen. And since when do you have to be a citizen to be a parent? So that's where, you know, coming from the child's perspective, which is what I, I do, because I haven't been an alienated mom or involved in that aspect, but I have been that child. And I could care less if my parent was a member or a citizen or, you know, had some kind of official membership to a group. It doesn't matter. They are your parent. That's their parent. I tell you, the courts and the state have to get out of this subjective mindset. They exactly. have to get into this objective clarity. Are they a parent or are they not a parent? If they're abusive or neglectful, have they been deemed like guilty of that through dependency court? Like it, Yeah, so there's three things that stops, stops parenthood, right? There's sexual abuse, physical abuse, and neglect. Everything else, there, there has to be some kind of um, you know, mechanism in place that keeps parents intact. They're, they're not bad parents just because they might have a, a drug abuse. They might have to have some parenting plans in place going through the dependency court to prove that they can you know, take care of these children because that's the goal, right? That is the, um, the whole purpose is to protect the child. That's the best interest of the child. But everything else, you know, they, you don't lose your children because of these things, these, these silly things that are um, a piece of paper or a membership. You know, you mentioned that some of these states, how they're getting these A ratings with you all and uh, domestic violence, incidences of domestic violence are dis decreasing. And what I know is that's, that's like a little magic bullet thing to pull is you know, is filing abuse allegations against um, your ex. And mm -hmm. then, or requiring that if you want anything to do with my child, it has to be under supervised visitation. So now you're putting that a shadow of doubt as far as their ability to parent on them. And, and now they're having to fight uphill against. And it's so that. destructive, it, you know, and, and if you were in a criminal court case, that wouldn't stand unless you had evidence, right? So some, for some reason, no evidence is required in, in family court. But if you've seen the movie um, Marriage Story, it shows you how two people that were going to, through a divorce were working it out until one of them decided, or one of their friends actually said, you need an attorney. And once the attorney stepped in, um, things started changing. And then when the one attorney saw that there was another attorney, then they started going full bore. And these people end up spending well over $200,000 for a divorce that they didn't need to litigate. Well, I've said this before too, Don and Danica, you know, both sides, when you're, uh, you know, some of the battles are legitimate, obviously. I hate some to of them that, are, but, yes. Uh, but I, uh, both sides, even the one, the side that is is throwing these silver bullets and thinks they're winning, they're both being played by the system. They want you yes. to drag it on and fight. So when you think you're winning, you're just being a sucker. Yes. And, and the yes. problem too is we have a lot, and not all, but we have a lot of these judges on the bench that are very insecure and they personalize. It's financially conducive for them to do that. Yeah, they, they, they put their right. So again, there, there's a variety, but the people out there, the great thing is, as we talked about Kentucky and these other uh, things that are progressing, there is, again, as you said, Don, the wonderful world word, traction. And you can feel it. And when I saw the Kentucky news a while back, I remember I was like, whoa, it, it's happening. Here we go. Like, it's really, and you can feel there. the energy. We, we, again, even we just talked about the Dad Talk Today Network and the shows on there and the excitement behind that and the other shows popping up all over the place and the people not even just doing shows, just doing the work behind the scenes that you're doing and everybody else, that huge, important mm -hmm. work. We're doing this. Yeah. Yes, and it is important to state, you, you mentioned that 
some of these are very legitimate and that is true and I don't want to be insensitive to the fact that there are some real real problems out there in some of these relationships and those are the ones that need to actually be in the courts they right. need to be in front of the judge so that the, there, can, there can be some safety mechanisms put into place to protect people, both the, um, one of the parents and the children of the marriage. So that definitely is there. But then there's a lot of other ones that are that we don't need to have that conflict in court when it's just an argument over who's the better parent. Right. Right. And as, as you mentioned, Don, the people, and we know there's a huge drug epidemic in this, in this world. You know, get get people up to the confidence level again, where they can acknowledge those uh, problems and, and have the confidence to fix themselves. Uh, you know, and the problem is these programs out there are so overburdened. Um, with, with again, you know, we won't get into that whole thing because that's the other uh, the, the legal drug dealers sometimes, <laughs> the, the pushers that that progress that sort of addictive behavior. But we that's a whole show topic for another day. Um, Don, this has been incredible, and I, again, I'm excited to meet you down in Florida. Oh, I think it's, I can't wait. It's so exciting. I keep thinking it's going to come really fast. <laughs> and it will. And it's, oh, it's going to be really great. The conference, just to, one of the things, there's two things I wanted to point out. One is the conference is called Guardians and Gatekeepers Conference for Professionals Impacted by These High Conflict Families Going Through Custody Situations. And it is in Lakeland, Florida, April 24th and 25th. Um, over the next few weeks, we will spotlight a speaker from the conference and, uh, and I get a little taste of it and, and, um, and also we'll show, tell you how to register for the conference. Second thing I wanted to point out is Dad Talk Today Network. Um, we are, we're the newbies on the block, uh, the new show on the block with uh, Dad Talk Today Network. Congratulations, that's awesome. I'm just so thrilled. You know what I what I love about it is I have for for 20 years um, tried to align myself with like-minded people, like-minded advocates. I have reached out on a number of times to different groups when I when they got on my radar to um, you know to to figure out where they are because I'm not all about you know uh, stomping around and and like hate and negativity. Like I really want to be. Uh, to collaborate with people who are actually creating a solution, a positive solution for families. And I would say that Eric Carroll has curated uh, several shows um, that are like-minded. They're all yes. about positive um, outcomes for families. So I think that too. Yeah. Yes. The, the aforementioned Mark Ludwig has a show uh, every week now. Uh, and and uh, again, there's some great shows on there. And we're very, very fortunate to be a part of it. And, and, I, and again, we talk a lot about, too, about, a lot, as, as you talked about, Danica, aligning yourself. And, and, and why it works with Danica. I genuinely love Danica. And I know she genuinely loves me. We support each other. I, we want to see it succeed. We want to see everybody out there succeed. Oh, you guys are but, awesome. <laughs> yeah, and, so, and we're going to do that. Because again, what, what the key word, folks, is love. And we're getting yeah. there, folks. Even the people that feel hopeless, we are the voice of the voiceless and we're getting there. Voice Thank of the you. voiceless. And I love that we speak from love is that really does, that can translate over so many barriers. If we call, all are coming from a position of love, there's no room for hate in this. There's already so much hate that we don't need anymore. So love it is. You don't have, somebody said once, you don't have to go looking for love when love is where you come from. That's no. exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Perfect. Guess what? Guess what time it is. Already. Yes. Well, Danica and Don, it has been an absolute pleasure going out. Eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, eight o'clock PM. Custody Matters Live this week and every week Wednesday. Thank you, everybody out there for joining us. Happy birthday to Mary Jane Rutledge, Parents United Worldwide. Everybody out there, chins up. It's not over till you say it's over. Custody Matters Live. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Thank Bye, you. Guys. See you next week. Bye.